Power Automate connectors, what are they? Connectors are a set of pre-built actions and triggers that can be used to connect all sorts of different applications and make them talk to each other. We can view every Power Automate connector from the connectors page here. If we select one of these connectors, it will take us to the page where we can see all of the triggers that connection has available. If you want to see what actions are available, you can click on the documentation link here. However, we are going to explore connectors directly inside the build page. So instead, let's click on Create, and we'll choose Instant Cloud Flow, giving us the option to run the flow with the click of a button. So we will select manually trigger a flow. We won't worry about creating a flow name right now, so let's click Create. Next, click on New Step. We're asked to choose an operation, and we are given some random connector prompts here or some action prompts here. There are also different tabs where we can filter connectors by category. Built-in and standard connectors are connectors by Microsoft, while premium connectors are connectors that require you to have a premium version of Power Automate and include many connectors created by third-party applications, such as Salesforce, Jira, and Adobe. Custom connectors are where you can select connectors created by folks within your own organization. From here, I can see connectors created by myself and others within my organization. The final tab is my clipboard. And this is a great feature that allows you to grab commonly used actions from other flows. For example, I am creating a new flow and I'm going to add an action that I had already created in another flow. So rather than creating that action from scratch, I can actually open in another tab, the flow that has that action, and I can click the ellipses and I can choose copy to my clipboard. Now I go back to my flow and select it from right here. Awesome. Now let's explore in depth some various connectors and get an idea of what actions are available. Let's go back to the All tab. And using the search bar, let's type in SharePoint. This will give us all the SharePoint actions and triggers down here. If we click See More, Power Automate will give us some more possibilities. We see actions with the SharePoint keyword in the action title, but there are actually some that are not SharePoint connectors, but still have SharePoint as a keyword in the title. When you find one you want to explore further, simply click it. Let's click Create File. We have now added this action to our flow. This action has a few fields that need to be filled in. And we can see by the red asterisk that these are all required fields. In order, in order to save our flow, we will need to fill all of these fields in. By filling in these fields, our Automate will be able to connect to our SharePoint folders and create a file for us in that location. If we want to discard this action, we simply click the ellipses and click Delete. We'll be given a confirmation prompt and we can click OK. Let's choose another action this time. Click New Step, and this time we'll look at non-Microsoft connectors. Let's find some Salesforce connectors. Let's type in Salesforce. We are shown the Salesforce connector in the results, as well as a list of actions. This time, click the Salesforce connector icon 
and it will hone in on all of the actions available with this connector. Click the Triggers tab, and we can see that Salesforce also has two triggers available. To go back to All Connectors, click the Back button. In the next tutorial in this series, we are going to build a simple flow that will let us explore using dynamic content. So we are not going to explore some of the aspects of connectors as they will be covered in the next tutorial. However, there are a few more things I want to show you. Let's select an Excel action by first typing in Excel in the search bar. Now I'll click the first connector here, Excel Online for Business. And now we see all of our triggers and actions. A lot. So let's use the search to narrow it down. I want to get a row from a table. So let's search using the keyword get. I see a few options. I want to get a row. So I'm going to search get a row. This actually expands the results, but it does put the closest result to our search right at the top for us to select. One thing you'll note is that some actions have a Show Advanced Options link, as seen here. Clicking it will reveal more options, which are generally not going to be required fields, but will give you some great stuff like more filters. Click the ellipses here. You'll see two items we explored already, copy to clipboard and delete. But we also have a rename option, which allows us to rename the action. I always recommend renaming your actions when building a flow so that you can get a quick glimpse of what the action does beyond simply the default name. One tip for you when renaming your actions is to leave the default name and actually include more details or add on more details. So if we click rename, we can keep the get a row default title, and we'll just call this get a row, and we want to get row two, so I'll call it get a row, colon row two, and we hit enter, and that will save it. Another way to save it is simply you click anywhere outside of the action, and that will save it as well. You also have some advanced settings here. And you also have a peak code option. This option allows you to view the raw code behind the action. You can click done to go back. As you are adding actions, it will always close the previously open action. So when we click new step, the get a row action will close, but you can also manually open and close actions by clicking on the title. If you need help with the action, you can click on the help button, which opens the side panel over here. This snippet here is from the documentation page for the connector, and it will open in a new tab where we can click where we can look at more details of this action and the other Excel online connector actions and triggers. Finally, we'll look at triggers. And though we started this flow with a manual button trigger, we can change it without having to leave the page. Simply click delete and you'll be prompted to select a new trigger. We have a get row action, so naturally we need a trigger that involves a file that we are working with, since our get row action needs to know which file it should get the row from. So let's create a file. So let's use a create file trigger. Search when a file is created. And let's choose this one. Power Automate connectors are getting more 
abundant as Microsoft continues to create more, and others within the Power Automate community are also adding to the ever-growing list. This means more possibilities of what can be automated, and that is super cool. Thanks everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.